Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. We are told to let our light shine. And if it does, we won't need to tell anybody that it does. Lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by, come on, patriots, call in with the Pledge of Allegiance on a beautiful Tuesday morning. Oh, man, I tell you what, after the thunder bumpers last night and the clearing and the nice sky, oh, what a nice day out there. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Zeb Bell, and you're listening to Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them. Get on the route service, 734-6969. Right now, it's time for our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Lorna. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How about you? Great. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice Oh, uh, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Call in again, Lorna. Thanks so much. Uh-huh. All right. Awesome day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Time for the weather right now and sponsored by k Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Hey, they threw open the doors at 7 o'clock this morning. Stay open till 5.30 tonight, 7 a.m. to 2 on Saturdays. They've got everything you need out there. You better believe it from forklifts to lawnmowers. they got all the tools and equipment. And uh, they're also a Honda engine dealer. And they've got all the parts you might need for wheel lines. At K and R Rental, two fifty six South, six hundred West of Hayburn, six seven eight three one two two. Tell you more in a minute. Right now, here's the weather. Here's your weather as we saddle up and ride again for today, and it's going to be a little bit on the breezy side, not as bad as it was yesterday afternoon, but close. Winds out of the west, fifteen to twenty five miles an hour, holding steady at about seventeen, but mostly sunny skies. High of eighty two, with an overnight low of fifty four tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies. We still have a chance of a stray shower or a thunderstorm. That is possible. High of 79 with an overnight low of 48. Going to be windy for tomorrow as well. And then for Thursday, looks like mostly sunny skies. High close to 80. That's your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. I'll tell you what. Good morning, everybody, and thanks to K&R Rental. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Number to call, 678-3122. You stop in, and they can help you with everything from forklifts to lawnmowers and all the experience and knowledge. Been there since 1979, K&R Rental. Well, let's see what else. Oh, I want to remind you, too, about Burley Livestock. Great big sale coming up on Thursday. You better believe it. the sale that works for you at 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy bring the gavel down probably at 11 o'clock this uh, Thursday morning. And don't forget the number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 6 Six seven eight nine four one one. That number again. Six seven eight nine four one one. Burley Livestock Sale Yard. The sale that works for you on Thursdays. Yeah, we were enjoying. You know, a lot of people that drive by my house. 
And Deanne commented on this again last night. You probably think we are crazy sitting outside underneath our little roof on the sun deck right there going on the east side of my house. I think it's fun to watch thunder bumpers. I think it's fun to watch all the lightning and the clouds and the hear the thunder and everything. We were sitting out there, and it was raining. We weren't wet. We were just enjoying the thunderstorm last night. Hey, Daryl's Cleaners, they enjoy serving you, and if you don't have time to do your clothes washing by gully then take your clothes in there they'll wash dry fold and iron all your clothes and uh, the best in dry cleaning you want to prolong your clothes and get them dry cleaned they are the best at daryl's cleaners i know when i was rodeoing full time they took care of all my wranglers my sports jackets and my shirts everything they do a tremendous job daryl's cleaners 1223 albion avenue in burley you stop in and see them too today wow we've got kind of a not so aggressive kind of laid-back program a little bit today at 906 i'm going to sneeze in a minute have you ever had an inkling to sneeze and it tells you in just a second you're going to sneeze i think i've got rid of it Okay, at 9.06, we're going to have, uh, I believe he's the chairman of the Rupert Fourth of July Committee coming on the air. 9.30, we're going to have Rachel Alexander with the stream. She's going to talk about some of the Supreme Court edicts that they have issued. She's down in Arizona. And then, of course, at 10.06, the champion of all the Western stories of the past, Dr. History, will be here. Then we're going to talk to a lady back in Wisconsin my old home state this morning, Donna Murr, and they're going to be talking about a takings case, a land takings case from them by the government. So that's what we're going to have for this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, along with the frog in my throat. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Hello, Ramseys. They opened the door at 7.30 this morning, and they'll stay open until 5.30 tonight. All your heating, electrical, and cooling needs at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Now, these warmer days, you've probably got the air conditioner on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you'll need a new air filter for your air conditioner. We'll stop in and get a case of 12, get discount pricing, and uh, it's all there for you. Heating, cooling, and electrical needs at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Now, if you're not aware of it, the Supreme Court, agreed with President Trump, and Trump said this a long time ago, that all these little judges that wanted to say, oh, you can't have a travel ban. Oh, no, no, that's anti-Muslim. Well, he had said back then that, yes, if it went to the Supreme Court, they would agree with him. Yes, the president has the power to implement the travel ban. Yes, it is not illegal. And yes, the Supreme Court went along with President Trump and overturned the Ninth Circuit foolishness. And now the 90-day travel ban can be re-implemented from the six major terrorist countries. And he can put the kibosh on people coming in en masse from those countries. Now, there are some restrictions. You know, there are some uh, people that can still get through, if you will, if they have family members here and there's a complete vetting process, or if they have a job lined up here, or they're coming back from a job, etc. But it's about time that we, <coughs> excuse me, the United States, thought more of us. I am not concerned about people coming in from foreign countries. I'm not. I am more concerned about the safety security of our families, our citizens, and residents. This is a huge victory for President Trump's administration. He was right all along. And it's also a huge move furthering our safety. We need to know who these people are. And it's about time that this carte blanche, everybody come on in, walk through the turnstiles attitude, is stopped. 
Call is welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Come on, call me. I'm going to have to start having a contest or something to get people to call right away in the morning on summer mornings. Uh, in the wintertime, no problem. We end up with maybe 25, 30 calls an hour. And in the summertime, you're sleeping in, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Caller, I'll be right there. Don't forget Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, America's Diner. Oh, my. I'll tell you what. I had those cream strawberry pancakes the other day. Knocked my boots off delicious. It was phenomenal. And uh, all the breakfasts are just absolutely delicious. And then they got a new line of burgers there. Oh, tantalizing good. You're going to love Denny's anytime all the time, with great people to serve you, great menus. There's two locations, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. The home is Ebb's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant. Caller, good morning. Good morning. What did I win? You didn't win anything because you're a, you're a good caller, but I'll treat you one of these days, and it's going to shock you. <laughs> Was your cattle prod? No, 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 no. Uh, what can I do for you this morning, my dear friend? Well, you being one of the best realtors in the world would know exactly what I'm going to talk about, and that is the housing situation. Like here in Burley, there just isn't anything available for people to rent. I mean, it's just clear full. And I'm sure you realize that being in the real estate business mm-hmm. is probably the same in Twin Falls. I get... Bring all these people in... Where they gonna live? You know, Keith, it, it's real. I'm not going to give a lot of information out on the air this morning because I don't think that would be fair to isolate just everything on me, me, me. But I get a lot of calls every week from people that are saying, "Do you know of a house to rent for this? Do you know of a three or four bedroom home for this or that?" I get a lot of calls, and you're 100 percent right. They are extremely hard to find. Yeah, and almost anything that you rent will be about $800 and up per month. Is that correct? Well, it's a uh, renter's market, if you will. If there was? It's a renter's market. I mean, if you own the property and there's uh, not a lot of rentals available out there, it's a renter's market. I mean, you can basically command the price you want. If you were the only car salesman within 150 miles, you would be a car sales market. You'd have the corner on it. Just like you, me, me, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was dirty, wasn't it? No, i tell you what, though. Um, I'm glad to see that we've got a lot of interest in coming into this area, but I, I admit that there's not very of that type of uh, homes available. But, uh, Keith, I do appreciate you bringing it up. You're always welcome on this program. You broke the ice of the first call this morning, and thank you, sir. Say hello to your lovely wife and have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll go do that right now. All right, sir. God bless you. Thank you much. Nice people right there. Hey, by the way, before we get into the next talk, I want to talk about two, and I'm going (laughs) to... I had a criticism levied at me a week ago, I think it was. And they said, well, you really highlight what people are, whether they're white or black or Asian. Uh, Sure. If it's in the news and it is a news story... And their particular race is the perpetration of the story. You bet your Justin Boots I'm going to put it on the air. I don't back down for anybody. I'm going to be talking about two black professors that lost their jobs, and rightfully so. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Oh, boy. i tell you old Nick Greenwell. I've known Nick for a long time. And his staff, they are so, so good. They've got the best of people. I think Deanne told me yesterday, I think it was Jeff Jensen over there, he won uh, the award of being the best physical therapist by the Reader's uh, Survey. I mean, nice people. They know their business. And they can help you get back to being you. 
I'm telling you, folks, they've got all the exercises. they got the only hydrotherapy pool in the area, and they are so helpful and so nice, and they care. That's the main thing, four-letter word, care. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. The number to call, 678-1191. I urge you to do that today. Two black professors are out of their jobs this morning because of their racist, bigoted remarks regarding white people. Some of the things that they had said, had the roles been reversed, and I, as a white commentator on the radio, had said that about blacks, the plug would have been pulled, and believe me, I probably would have had to barricade myself in the house for the fear of people trying to get through the doors. If any one of us would have tried or said what they said, we would be in a lot of trouble, and quite frankly, we would have been fired too. One of the two pathetic black professors that are teaching our children, well, they were up until about 48 hours ago, made a stupid comment that the student that was held in captivity over in North Korea, Otto Warmbier, got what he deserved. Just mull those words over for a few moments. Here's a college student on a tour to North Korea, and he is arrested and put in prison, beaten, and finally is shipped home in a comatose state and dies. And one of these idiotic, pathetic black teachers, professors, said... He got what he deserved. And both of them got on television and were yelling and screaming about white privilege. White privilege. Would somebody please take the time and the effort right now to call me and explain to me what white privilege is? Are you given things, provided things, or escorted to things, or whatever because of your color? Being a Caucasian white? I'm not. I never have. I've never been given anything because of my skin color. The last I looked, and I'm 69 years old, I've had to work for every doggone thing that I've got. I'm proud of what I've achieved. But I worked for it. I earned it. Nobody gave it to me. There was no white privilege. What is going on in our society today? Please, somebody explain this to me. What's going on that we haven't seen this kind of division and divisiveness since the 60s with George Wallace, Selma, Alabama, etc.? And now it's becoming rampant in our colleges The riots and these idiotic millennials that are saying, oh, white privilege, we don't want you on campus, take the day off, it's going to be just us for color like at Evergreen College up in Washington. How sick and pathetic. Would somebody explain to me, please, call me right now and explain what is white privilege? Well, I'm waiting for your call. I want to remind you, too, about the Rupert Fourth of July. Oh, my goodness sakes, have they got some ripping good times over there. And it's going to start this week and go all the way through the Fourth of July. I'm telling you what, uh, we're going to have Jason Gibbons on the phone with us a little bit later on. 87th annual Fourth of July celebration, June 28th through July 4th. And I mean they're going to have activities at the Wilson Theater. They're going to have all kinds of food booths on the square in Rupert. They're going to have music. Oh, are they going to have music? They're going to have mutton busting. They're going to have patriotic programs. They're going to have lawnmower races. Well, I'm telling you, you better get on over there. Rupert Fourth of July celebration for 2017, June 28th through July 4th, over in the great town of Rupert. Going to be a lot of fun. 
All right, callers, come on, give me a jingle, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. want to remind you, too, that on Thursdays we have a segment called It's Time to Grow with Tony McCammon with the University of Idaho Horticulture Department. Tony is one sharp dude, and I'm telling you, we're going to have this week one of the master gardeners on there. The president, Larry Zott, is going to be on the program. That should be pretty interesting at 915 on Thursday. Don't miss that. Uh, caller, thank you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Zeb. Yeah. Uh, this this whole situation is a, a divide and conquer situation. Now, if you took a poll of those people that are out demonstrating, you, you're going to find out probably 80% of them on welfare. They have nothing else to do but sit around, uh, eat potato chips, and watch... Uh, uh, TV all day, so this has become an occupation with them. Mm-hmm. I don't have any sympathy for them because I remember growing up during the Depression, living in the cold water flats, some nights going to bed, uh, going to bed with uh, uh, little bread and milk, and I remember the day very well when my dad couldn't pay the $9 a month rent. We got dispossessed the first day. All our furniture was put out on the sidewalk. Not, a, not that I'm complaining about that. Because that's made me strong enough to handle just about any situation that comes up. So this is what we've got. We've got a bunch of welfare recipients that are receiving taxpayers' money to go out there and try to bring this country to its knees. Well, okay, Tony, stop for a minute. In your story of growing up and seeing some pretty hard times, where, explain to me, is the so-called white privilege? I see a lot of white people around here in ragged clothes, driving old cars. Uh, I hear uh, Gina talking about uh, senior citizens, uh, with the cost of uh, senior citizens to feed them, to make sure they're healthy. And uh, many of these people that are out there demonstrating are taking the tax monies that should be going to our senior citizens And use it for purposes of demonstrating against our own government. Yeah, but here's the point, Tony. Uh, What is white privilege? I mean, uh, just because you're born into the world, did you get a silver spoon and an avenue named after you that you could travel down that avenue and everybody give you a free ride? Everybody would pay your way. Everybody would open doors for you. Baloney. Nobody did that for you, and they didn't for me either. I am sick and tired of certain people, minorities in this country, trying to cause more divisiveness by saying white privilege. Mary worked out in the cotton fields when she was a young girl. I know she did. Yes. You know. So she's white. And damn proud of it. There's a whole bunch of uh, all all these uh, people that are out there demonstrating. Yes. And how many freebies are they getting? Yeah, you know, Tony, I am... It really gets gets to me. Really, I know you and Mary... Senior citizens out there that haven't had a cost of living increase for I don't know how long, and we're worried about, we're concerned about feeding them. Yeah. But we're not concerned, doesn't seem like we're too concerned about these people that are absorbing our tax dollars, giving them the rights to go out and demonstrate against our country. Amen. I, I'm. It's a blessing for Deanne and I to know you and Mary, <clears throat> and Mary, one of the greatest, feistiest women I've ever met. God bless both of you, and thank you for your call. You're welcome. All right, buddy. They're they're true friends. And they went through some hard, hard times growing up in this country. And God bless them. They're super nice people. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Come on, give me a call. Really define to me. I'm, I'm not overlooking something, I don't think. But what is white privilege? I paid for my own education. Hmm. Didn't have anybody give me a free ride there. I have worked hard for everything I've bought. Nobody bought it for me and said, Here, Zeb, it's all yours. Compliments of society because you have white privilege. Bogus. 
Let's uh, give a nice shout out to Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room and the number to call for a hearing screening, and I urge that you do. I did, and it really helped me. And uh, the number is 312-0957. And Dr. Christine Pickup absolutely can help. Your hearing loss might be because of medication. It might be because of a disease or something, and she can help find it and help you. So please call today, 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, serving you. Also, real quick, let's not forget our friends. Hello, Juan and the crew, Eli, all of them at Barry Equipment and Rental, Sales, Service, and Parts at Jerome, South Lincoln, and Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, along with 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They do have all the equipment to get the job done right. They've got all the Bobcat excavators. I've got to get over there and get a Bobcat excavator. I know there are those in the audience that are saying, oh boy, look out, Zeb. Don't worry. I've got it under control. They've got all the equipment rentals, all the retail equipment sales. They've got it all for you. And uh, if you're not sure how to run them, they get a big sandbox out behind so that they'll teach you. Yeah, and then you can go home and work up a storm. Barry Equipment and Rental. Jerome, Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Really, really nice people. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Again, I ask you for a defining of what white privilege is in this country. I'd like to hear what your viewpoint on that subject matter is. While I'm waiting for your call, and I'm almost a little hesitant to even talk about this next story, because I know I'm going to get too emotional. I'm going to take a minute, take this call, and then we'll come back. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zach. Yes, sir. White privilege for you. White Our, privilege is when somebody else that's not white sees what you and me do and work our tail off to get what we got, and then they're jealous of it. That's the best I can define it. You know, I think you're right on the right track, too. I think the jealousy part comes into the point where they, in many cases, or in most cases, too lazy to get up off the curb they're sitting on with their tin cup and go do something. Sir, I appreciate your remarks. Thank you. I just had word that my son and his lovely wife, Shanna, and uh, Austin and Max, Mad Max, are listening this morning. Good morning to you. And uh, I just want to say I love all of you. Thank you so much much. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir, Gary. Well, I have a take on this, and it's a very delicate subject, because to answer your question, you have to get rid of a lot of emotion, because that's what this is all about. Uh, We have absolutely two cultures in this country, and we have one born out of Africa and one born out of immigrants who came to America from other places who developed a culture, the American culture, and one was developed into white privilege, as we call it. Now, today, the poorest of the poorest white person can still call the richest, most elevated man in the world, black man in the world, the N-word, and still be supreme. And that's the mental thing, and that's what this young, uh, uh, young blacks, uh, people of color, are all outraged about, that there is still the white man rules. Now, wait a minute. When you saw President Obama stand on the stage and say, we are fundamentally going to change America, that's exactly what he was talking about, is that the white man has had this country long enough whether it be tongue-in-cheek or not or whatever. And as you saw, that the only thing that has changed anything in this country is the radical blacks or people of color who are angry about how they're still being treated. You saw it in Ferguson. You see it here and there. And it's all about that they are lesser than the whites and that they're certainly being treated differently. Now, 
how I feel about it personally, whether I think that's true or whether I don't think it's true. They think it's true, and that's where the white supremacy is born out of. Okay, now let me jump in here and say something back to you so you can respond, because I value your viewpoint. Number one, uh, if you go up to somebody and call them a cracker or a honky or whatever, and wheels, you got to watch the feedback over there. It's way too high. It, that's okay. The blacks can say that to you or I and call us names. Now, I would never stoop low enough to call anybody that N-word. No way, no shape, no how. However, I will say this. And wheels, once again, the feedback you've got to watch over there. However, I will say this. I am absolutely adamant that when we name the classifications of mankind, which are Caucasian, mongoloid and negroid why in the world does the left always jump out of their eggshells and yell scream and holler for your head when you mention the word negroid or negro when it is a legal classification of mankind well because it's never really uh in this whole context that we're talking about of race uh then in a positive uh, manner because uh, we have all, and not it's it's not off the cut and dry because when you look at uh, America as a white country that got out of uh, away from other white people, also uh, the fabulous things that we have created. Uh, Africa has not done that. Tahiti has not. I mean, uh, Haiti has not done that. And even when uh, India threw the English out. They didn't uh, help their people any. They still are doing, you know what, defecating in the streets and uh, peeing in the backyard. So uh, I don't want to say that's where they think the white man was better than they are. It's that the white man did create a lot of wonderful things. Does that make him better in the eyes of God? No. That's right. But then you still have to get down and look at the poor people that only have one thing to grasp at, and then you've got the Hollywood crowd who has uh, their following. And you know, everything you said is right. I don't care if we're talking about Thomas Edison. I don't care if we're talking about Alexander Graham Bell, John Glenn, Henry Ford, Ray Kroc, the starter of all the McDonald's in this country. I don't care what color anybody is. If they want to work, there still is a land of opportunity here in the United States of America, regardless of skin color. And I am so sick and tired of people lumping categorically, oh, well, you're white, you got white privilege, etc. I had never have had white privilege privilege. I dare say, Gary, you never have either, and I'm sick and tired of being labeled. Well, that's absolutely true. Uh, However, there is the other side that thinks you have, and because of the color of your skin and the color of theirs, that's the way it is, and they've got a little bit of power with social media uh, and signs of the times. Uh, and that's where it's going, and there's a whole segment of that other population that is going to melt this for all it's worth and um, create a, a big storm, which it is, which is happening. Okay, real quick, now, give me I a... I don't like it. Do I want it? Do I think it's right? Do it's whatever? No, I've, I've never been racist. I've never been any of that kind of stuff. But I've never been anyone other than who I am. Okay. I don't know about all of that. Yeah, but wait a minute, Gary. Hold on a second. Real quick, short answer on this because i got to get a commercial break in. Little by little, our society and us as Caucasians are being belittled and chopped up, if you will, and put into the background by other colors, other races, like what happened in the state of Alaska yesterday. They are dumping Christopher Columbus Day and the recognition of Columbus Day, and they're going to go to indigenous people day little by little we're letting it happen and i think it's wrong we should be proud of who we are we should be proud of what we've done to form this great country the united states of america and all of its changes since 1774 and uh we just seem to sit in the back sit in the background and let people control us that seems to be the way it is i agree with you absolutely totally all the way around but uh, this other faction uh is um disagrees with you uh, and disagrees with me and they've got a little power and they got the media and they're going to milk it for all it's worth and they're going to take the white man down if they can 
Gary, I really appreciate your remarks this morning. Please come on the program so we can talk again. You're a dear friend. God bless you, man. i got to do a commercial break, and then we'll take the next call. Thank you so much. Uh, Wheels, I need you to play a few good words about the Silver State Stampede. Grab your hat and kick up your heels as the Silver State Stampede thunders into Elko for three big nights, July 13th through the 15th, for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA-sanctioned event brings you the thrill of pro riders going head-to-head, then local cowboys trying their luck in the world-famous Ring of Fear, set to thrill audiences all three nights. Enjoy the kickoff party on Thursday with Old West Bronc Riding, Mutton Bustin' Trade Show, Mechanical Bull, Fantastic Food and Treats, Live Music with the Jeff Palmer Band, and so much more. Tickets are on sale now at Roy's, the J.M. Capriola Company, the Moot Barn, IFA, and the Elko Chamber Office. Make your plans now to be at the Elko County Fairgrounds for the thrills and spills for the 2017 Silver State Stampede. For more information, call 775-934-2392. The 2017 Silver State Stampede. Don't miss it. I'll tell you what, we've had a lot of fun down there over the years. Elko, Nevada, Silver State Stampede. Real quick, I want to remind you, too, about the Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. 436-3200, the number to call. They make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. It is a facility they invite you to come by and see anytime, take a tour, and uh, your loved ones will have a wonderful time there. They go to a lot of community events, such as the Wilson Theater, and of course all the activities on the Rupert Fourth. It is really the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. Call them today, 436-3200, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Caller, I am so sorry to keep you waiting. Thank you. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb. Well, it, it goes beyond just the you know, the fact that the we have all these hyphenated Americans. You know, when my grandfather came here in nineteen oh three from Germany that had been ravaged by Fabian socialism that had destroyed the economy in Europe, was fortunate to be able to have a, a steerage to be able to get over here. But our education system has created this situation. We no longer know much about our American heritage. We know very little about the uh, Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. And we we always say we celebrate the 4th of July. It's not the 4th of July, it's Independence Day. But the, the fact is, uh, you know, there were more black plantation owners that owned slaves than there were white. How many people know that out there? That's right. I, I doubt to say very, very few. Yeah, that's audience. right. Yep. And it's a fact, but this is not being taught. And, of course, the media and the whole, it's, it goes beyond just black and, and white. It goes to create this welfare state so people of all colors, including white, are put on welfare because they destroy our jobs with NAFTA and uh, this Trans-Pacific Partnership would have been, you know, NAFTA on steroids. But anyways, Zeb, it, it's just that we're trying to destroy our culture by bringing in uh, refugees that will not assimilate to our culture. My grandfather, and I'm sure many out there, have ancestors that came to this country. Now, my mother's family came here in 1636 to, so that they could escape the religious persecution that was put upon them. And so, you see, we all have to get involved. So many people just say, you know, these things are, it's the last days, these are things that are, and I'm talking about my Christian friends, and those of you out there that say, well, it's, it's just got to happen anyway. And God didn't say we. No, 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 no. That's right. Adrian, 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 I can't let you just go on and on. Adrian. 
please, I can't let you just go on and on. I got to have an insertion here because uh, you've been on, and I got to have something back to you. I agree with everything you said. I, I I have a lot of friends that are of multi races and ethnicities, and God bless them. I enjoy to sit down and visit with them and talk to them and find out about their lives and their family and everything else. They're not pushing to take what I have. I'm certainly not pushing to take what they have. I've learned to live with them, and they've learned to live with me in a very, very uh, copacetic relationship to where we're friends, regardless of the color. But today, right now, more so than ever before, since Obama was in office, we're seeing the same divisiveness that was back in the 60s in Selma, Alabama, etc., only it's like, you use your terminology, it's on steroids. It's getting worse every day. And when you have black professors at colleges saying that whites get what they deserve when they get shot and killed, or Otto Warmbier over in North Korea, he got what he deserved, and calling us white privilege or honkies, I'm sick of this. It's got to stop on both sides of the fence, and we're never going to settle the race relations in any country until we sit down, shut up, and try to treat each other as human beings. Well, that's true. The man's inhumanity to man is, is just goes on and on and on. But I just got to get this in there. Real fast. You know, most of the problems today could be solved that are coming right out of the United Nations. I agree. The common core of the refugee program gun control. You name it, and it's come. It's been our enemy since its inception in 1945. We can do that. We can get out of the U.N. by passing H.R. 193. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta get a weather forecast on. I appreciate it, Adrian. Thank you. I'm running late. I gotta get a weather on real quick. I'm, I'm way over. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. We need to get hold of Simpson and our other representatives. Get on the emails. We need a nationwide effort to get out of the U.N. because until we do, they're going to be successful. All right, got to go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, sir. God bless. And uh, now the weather forecast as we calmly turn the page and say Riverview Urgent Care at 382 North Overland in Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East and Twin and Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A and Jerome. Minor emergencies, major care. Fell off the ladder, didn't you? <laughs> you got a sprain. Or maybe you were trying to saw this tree limb off and ended up kind of hacking your hand a little bit. Well, hey, listen, minor emergencies. Emergencies, major care. The doctor will see you now, not in four or five days. And believe me, they're open seven days a week to serve you, okay? The urgent cares. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather as we saddle up and ride again for today. And it's going to be a little bit on the breezy side, not as bad as it was yesterday afternoon, but close. Winds out of the west. 15 to 25 miles an hour, holding steady at about 17, but mostly sunny skies, high of 82, with an overnight low of 54. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. We still have a chance of a stray shower or a thunderstorm. That is possible. High of 79, with an overnight low of 48. Going to be windy for tomorrow as well. And then for Thursday, looks like mostly sunny skies, high close to 80. That's your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. Brought to you by the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care. Twin Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. It's true. Minor emergencies. Major care. Calls welcome. Come on, give me a jingle on the landline. And I want to say thank you to some of the merchants over in Rupert for the Independence Day 4th of July celebration. Magic Valley Carpet, 613 D Street in Rupert. They have all your flooring needs. Carpet, hardwood, vinyl, laminates, tile, everything. And very, very accomplished and professional people for the installation. Magic Valley Carpet wishing you a happy 4th of July on 613 D Street in Rupert, along with Haskin Insurance Service, 629 Fremont Street in Rupert, the number to call, 436-4141. Mike, Dustin, Don, and Terry are always there to help you with over 50 years of combined insurance selling experience. They really know and can help you with your home, auto, farm, life, or health. Give them a call, Haskin Insurance Service in Rupert. Caller, thank you. Good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, Zeb, I got all. I was going to talk about the fires. Is that all right? No, I'm going to stay on my subject this morning, and we're not going to change. Oh, 
<laughs> no, seriously, I don't mean to be rude, Randy, but right now I want to talk about white privilege. Now, wait a minute. Hear me out. I want to talk about white privilege. Do you feel that with your construction work and everything that everybody has handed you, in uh, your case, maybe a silver saw so that you had a great business? Did somebody give you white privilege? All I've ever known is uh, work. When I was a boy, my mom and my mother said, this is how much debt we owe, and you better get up and get to work. We had a dairy, feedlot, and a farm. And uh, so, if I learned one thing, it was to be nice as I could be, but never give in on your convictions. Don't be a pushover. And, uh, and then, you know, work as hard as you know how, and... Uh, I have free will, Zeb. Nobody's going to do anything for me. I can only do it for myself. And then somehow the divine intervention comes in whenever it does. I do not know when. But I know I can't do anything if I don't help myself. Amen. Those who help themselves. Amen. Well said, as usual. Randy, thank you for your call. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, I, I really get upset over this issue. Because I've heard over the last, I don't know how many months, days, years, et cetera, for the last eight or ten years, white privilege, oh, well, you've got it all. It was all handed to you. You get all the benefits. Oh, you get all the uh, open doors. Where? And who? I don't remember seeing any open doors for me. And I'm sure that, I don't care if you're talking about J.R. Simpla, I don't care who you're talking about, people that were really self-made and they worked hard. They got out of bed in the morning with a purpose. They got out of bed with a drive and a goal and a desire to be the best they could be with the talent that God gave them. It had nothing to do with color. It had nothing to do with race. They wanted to achieve they wanted to achieve, and they wanted to be successful. And there is nobody that can say there's closed doors out there if you really want to work and you want to put down all the barriers, you can still in this day and age achieve if you try. But you got to work for it. And this garbage by these people that have got the IQ of a box of rocks that say that, White privilege. You had it handed to you. I would like to have those people at least have the courage, if there's any here in this audience, to call and explain to me, where in the world are you coming from? Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. The story that I was going to get into this last half hour, and in some respects I'm glad that I didn't. It's such an emotional story about a 10-month-old baby girl. This is hard. A 10-month-old baby girl was left in a car in Twin Falls and died. She was left in there, according to the news story, for hours on Friday and when they found the baby girl she was unresponsive and later died there is a quote in the paper this morning that said officers learned that the baby had been left unattended inside a parked vehicle for several hours during the afternoon and evening hours on Friday how how could anyone Leave a 10-month-old baby in a car, unattended, for hours. I don't care who the parents are. I think they should be held accountable for whatever the law wants to throw down on them, and I hope they are punished severely. There can be no reason. None that I can think of, and if you can think of something, you better call me and let me know how you could possibly leave a little 10-month-old baby in a car to where it succumbs 
and dies. I want to say thank you to our sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, where doing the right thing matters. They've got all your tires, all the different tread designs, all the sizes for your pickups, SUVs, passenger cars, horse trailers, boat trailers, whatever. They, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, have the tires. Absolutely. And the best in brake service with highly trained brake technicians. And, of course, don't forget, too, uh, the front end alignment, shocks and struts, and all the batteries. All the batteries. I almost had to buy a new battery this last weekend. I left my lights on for about two hours. (laughs) Anyway, I want to say that you should stop in and see them today. They are the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls and Randy on Overland in Burley. I told you, they're the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Next hour, Jason Gibbons with the Rupert Fourth of July Committee and then at 9.30, uh, Rachel Alexander from down in uh, Arizona talking about various subjects. Uh, The ban been lifted, uh, or I should say the ban now being imposed on those six countries. We're going to talk about that. Dr. History at 10.06 and Donna Murr from Wisconsin talking about takings of land. And it's going to be an interesting morning. Don't go away. Zeb at the ranch. I'll see you in seven minutes. Wheels, take it away, buddy. Oh, good morning, good morning on a Tuesday, cooler today. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and of course some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. You know, they've got so much to offer you as far as helping you because they're always at your disposal. You know, like various size dumpsters. I know Deanne said we'd better get the big one, park it out the back door of my studio, and start throwing things in. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Anyway, you can get the dumpsters. They'll deliver it. You fill it up. You call them. They'll come and get it. It's gone. Absolutely. They are loyal to their community and the people that they serve. Western Way Services all was at your disposal call them today 734-6969 really really good folks hey too i want to remind you about vicky's country gardens oh my goodness that lady is so nice and uh, we've known each other for a long long time and she has a program on mondays at 9 15 gardening for idiots named after me because i'm not much of a gardener but i'm learning vicky's country garden at 185 south 600 west of paul number to give her a call 438-5663 they've got all the annuals 25 percent off fruit peas 20 percent off and And uh, all the bark and the rock and the decor items for your yard for this weekend coming up. Spruce up, fix up, clean up. Going to be great. Hey, Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. You stop in and see her today. Real quick, before we get our guest on for this segment, I want to remind you about Dr. Bill, Dr. Liz, and the whole staff over at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Again, they were voted Menacasha's best veterinary hospital, and uh, boy, they know that uh, they want to take care of your dogs and your kitty cats and your large animals. Yep. Big or small, they love them all. And right now it's tea, it's tick and flea season. <laughs> I almost said tea. Never mind. I had it all messed up. Summer is the season for ticks and fleas. And if you know your dogs are scratching and an itching, laying there on the kitchen floor, you might get them too. So you better watch out. Be prepared and uh, take care of the ticks and the fleas. And they can help you at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Number to call, 678 
Well, let's go to the phone line real quick. And we have, I believe he's the chairman of the committee over there. Oh, my goodness, I just tipped over all my papers on the desk. Jason Gibbons, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you this morning, Zip? Not too bad. Are you the chairman of the Rupert Committee, or what's your status? Tell us, please. I am the chairman of the Rupert Fourth of July celebration. So if anything goes wrong, they're going to be throwing the eggshells at you, right? <laughs> well, the, hopefully that hasn't happened yet, so okay. hopefully we're good. Uh, I tell you what, in your real life, you're also the chief financial officer of Minidoka Memorial Hospital. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, sir. Well, we're going to talk about the Rupert Fourth of July celebration this morning. And, Jason, doggone, uh, this has been going on for what now, 87 years? Is that right? I think it's more like uh, about 110 years Rupert celebrated the 4th of July. Oh, well, they've got 87th annual 4th of July celebration on my sheet, so I apologize. Well, no, that's great. That's um, the formal celebration, but we have researched back. We had Gary Shoresman research it last year, and Rupert's actually had some kind of a celebration for almost 110 years. And if Gary Shoresman says it's so, let me tell you something, Mr. Gibbons, that's the way it is. That's what we understand. Okay. <laughs> well, give us a little highlight and a kind of a rundown. It's going to start on uh, this week, the 28th, and go through the 4th of July. What should people be aware of? Well, it starts on Friday the 30th, actually. We usually have a five-day celebration starting on the 30th. So this year, that'll be on Friday this, this week. Uh, we'll start with uh, Christmas lighting breakfast that morning, Friday morning on the square. From 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., people come down and have some breakfast with us to support the, the Christmas Lighting Committee. That would be great. Our entertainment and food booths will open for lunch that day, and then entertainment starts at 6 o'clock that night. Our featured band is the Salamanders. We have had them in the past. They're a real high-energy band that plays a wide variety of music um, from the 60s, 70s into the current stuff. And then we'll have fireworks that evening at 10, 10, 15, whenever it gets dark. So that'll be fun to kick off our celebration um, on Saturday. Something new this year, we are having our first annual mutton busting competition out at the fairground. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've tried rodeos, we've tried nothing but bowls. Now we're going to do nothing but mutton busting. So we're going to try that out. We announced that on our Facebook page a while ago. And uh, we've already actually, I think, from what Cheryl has said, we're already almost full with mutton busters, about 35 of them or so, and we're going to have a big round-robin competition, so it should be fun. Come out and enjoy that at the fairgrounds on Saturday evening. You know, i tell you something, Jason. You get all those kids, and I believe it's for, what, ages 4 to 8 and up to 60 pounds. Isn't that right? That's correct, yep. And you get all those kids out there. I don't think there's enough sheep in the state of Idaho if every one of those kids wanted to ride. I mean, this is a fun thing to watch. Yeah, that's why we had to limit it. About 30, 35 kids. So hopefully we've got enough sheep and... We appreciate the Arthur family for providing those for us. Hey, one thing that I'd like you to really talk about, and I enjoy during the 4th of July Independence Day weekend or day, is, of course, anything patriotic. Have you got a great big patriotic program planned? Well, we do. Sunday evening we have a patriotic program. That will start at 6 o'clock up on the square. Uh, we have a uh, committee that puts that together for us every year, and it's great. We have everything from music to readings. Um, all kinds of stuff to celebrate the, the 4th of July and especially to recognize our veterans. Are you going to sing? We have the, the service songs for any of the veterans who might be there to stand and be recognized. We usually have our legislators there to recognize them and provide them with a little gift, a token of appreciation for their service. Uh, we also have this year the Idaho 25th Army Band. Who, part of that band will be here with us for our patriotic program Sunday evening. They'll play the national anthem and then the service songs at the end and then play some other songs afterwards. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Is it true, I heard a rumor, that you're going to be one of the lead singers singing It's a Grand Old Flag? <laughs> well, well I, I would happy to be doing my part. Okay. <laughs> 
Hey, what about this deal? You know, for years I have threatened to become part of your lawnmower races. I want you to take some time right now and uh, tell us all about the lawnmower races. All right. Well, Joe Phillips and his group um, put on a great event. You know, we had one last weekend. The Sir Optimus Club sponsored that. And now, and next weekend, this coming weekend, we're going to have, uh, or Monday evening, the 4th of July lawnmower races. Uh, it's great. There's a great group of guys. You know, they bring several different machines out there in different classes and race each other. And, I mean, if you haven't been out there and seen the lawnmower races, they have a track set up in the in the fairgrounds and Rodeo Arena, man, great experience, a lot of fun, a lot of guys just get out there and get after it, and really competitive, so it's great, come out and enjoy it. Okay, now, I, of course, uh, being as large as I am, I'm not as big as I used to be, but uh, I love to eat. I am sure that Rupert has some great food available, talk about that. Oh, we've got great food. If you ever been to the Rupert Fourth of July celebration, that's what we're known for is our food booths around the square. Everything from uh, Mexican food to Philly cheesesteak sandwiches to scones to uh, hamburgers and fries at the Kiwanis booth and the SFA booth, the Montana Steakhouse, uh, brick oven pizza, you band, about everything for everybody. It's a great time. Uh, let me ask you this now. What about horse races for this year? I understand that the horse races will only take place on Sunday the 9th. Oh. Um, from the information that I have, the horse races seem to have some trouble getting the horses, and I understand they're going out of Boise. And so, yeah, I, but I believe we're only Sunday the 9th for horse races. Well, now, every year during the 4th of July celebration, don't you have a carnival you want to talk about, too? You know, we have had a carnival in the past, but our contract ran out, and we kind of jointly decide to part ways and we haven't been able to find a carnival so no carnival this year okay sorry to say well with the food booths and all the entertainment now a lot of entertainment every day at the square is that correct that is correct starting friday night um saturday night we'll have the, the long run which is an eagles tribute band a lot of people have seen them in the wilson theater and they've they were kind of coming through town and wanted to perform again, so we were happy to sign them up for their Saturday night. Uh, Sunday, Sunday is the patriotic program, Then Monday we'll come back with the Chancellors. Uh, they're an oldies hit group, so if you like oldies music, the Chancellors will be great Monday evening. How come when they always say, like in the 60s, the uh, decade that I graduated from high school and went to college, why do you always insert the word oldies? Uh, you know... <laughs> That's just the way it is. I, I hate to tell you that, but it's that you're a little on the old side. Sorry. Okay. okay, what about the absolutely phenomenal Rupert Fourth of July parade? Oh, it's a great parade. I mean, really, Rupert puts on the best Fourth of July celebration in the whole state, five days long, culminating on, on July the 4th with the parade around Rupert. Um, you know, it's just an amazing thing when you walk around there during the parade and see thousands of your friends and neighbors from the area, from the community, uh, surrounding communities as well. Great to see the floats and everything else that's provided in the parade. It's just a great way to culminate our celebration, especially with our um, flag guard, you know, bringing the flag down and really recognizing the veterans and so forth. It's just a great experience. You know, if you haven't been to the Fourth of July parade, come on over. You know, let me ask you this part of it, uh, Jason. I, I've said this many, many times that Rupert has one of the most unique experiences to offer with a city square. It kind of reminds me of uh, the movie, you know, with James Stewart. It's a Wonderful Life, you know, and the city square and everything. You've really got something over there that a lot of towns would beg for. It is. It's a it's a great thing, great place to commune to, to really gather together as a community and enjoy being around one another. Um, really, Rupert is a very unique place. Uh, the square is great, man. The the city is just my hat goes off to the city and all the work that they put into it, and um, it is really unique. And we certainly enjoy utilizing it and taking advantage of it for the fourth of july you know jason let me ask you did i miss anything if so go ahead and tell us about any topic or any item that i might have missed 
You know, I think that we pretty much covered it all. I think the one new thing that we have this year on the morning of the 4th, you know, we've had our Firecracker 5K, 10K race uh, that morning for a few years now, but this year we're actually adding a 40K bike ride. Bike ride. So uh, any of those serious uh, bikers out there who want to come out for a 24-mile course race, uh, we invite them to come out the morning of the 4th, 7 a.m. at East Minico. That's kind of the new, new one we have this year. Okay, 24 miles. Are you going to be involved in that? You know, I have been in the past. Um, I'm not sure I'll get out there. It depends on how much help everybody needs that morning, but I would certainly like to. It would be uh, great. All right. Well, put down that scone at one of the food booths and get on your bike and get to pedaling there, Jason. I, I agree. <laughs> okay. It's not the scone on the fourth. It's a... Uh, all the stuff leading up to it. All right. Listen, Jason Gibbons, uh, with the 4th of July, he's the chairman over in Rupert, and we wish you very uh, much success this year with a lot of people. The weather sounds like it's going to be pretty good for you. Jason Gibbons, thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, sir. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Nice, nice people over there in Rupert with their 4th of July celebration again for this year. Calls are welcome and appreciated, so give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what you have to say this morning, so we'll talk about any subject you want to bring up, and I've got a couple of my own that I want to talk about in a second, so give me a call. Don't forget Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, the number to call, 436-5636. And he's also going to be part of the festivities going on over there in Rupert for the 4th of July weekend. Joel Heward, the manager of Hanson Mortuary, they're going to have a great big 4th of July veterans breakfast at Hanson Mortuary starting at 8.30 in the morning on the 4th before the parade starts. They're going to have bacon and cheese potatoes. Oh, they're good and crepes and oh my goodness it's just a good time for everybody and I urge you to be in attendance don't forget please Handsome Mortuary serving you and your family always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity remember the number again 436-5636 Handsome Mortuary in Rupert okay now it's your turn 436 I hate to say this. No, maybe I don't hate to say it because I was right. And many more like me were right. I had programs and segments on those programs devoted to saying, no, 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 don't go to a $15 an hour minimum wage. It will not work. It's not going to work. It's going to take away jobs. It's going to create more unemployment. And then many of you said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. $15 an hour minimum jobs, well, that's going to stimulate the economy. Blah, 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 on and on. No, it didn't. And to be very honest with you, the proof is in the pudding with a brand new study that came out about how Seattle, Washington's $15 an hour minimum wage has fallen through the cracks. It had the opposite effect of what all the liberals and all the do-gooders thought. It has absolutely cut jobs. It has absolutely lowered the amount of available jobs. And employers are asking their employees to work fewer hours, and they're actually taking home less money, even at a $15 an hour rate, because they're not working as many hours. It's not rocket scientist. You can figure it out yourself. 15 bucks an hour for entry level jobs, minimum wage jobs, ridiculous. 120 bucks a day? You employers cannot afford this in small mom and pop operations. And some employers have not been able to afford the increased minimums. They've cut their payrolls, putting off new hiring reducing hours or letting workers go. 
Oh, everybody thought 15 bucks an hour. Oh, it's a utopia. We're all going to make money. Minimum wage jobs were never intended to support families and create careers. And now the city of Seattle, with this latest study, they found that uh, they're losing jobs on the workforce. They're losing workers, and they're really in worse shape now than they were before. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear your response. Give me a call. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. And they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And uh, with the forecast that we got for this upcoming weekend, you better hit the water, whether it's the lake or the rivers with the watercraft they have available for you over at Let's Ride. Oh, my goodness. Wow, this is where the fun is sold. They've got all the four-wheelers. They've got all the side-by-sides. They've got everything over there. They've got all the accessories. They've got the clothing. And you know one thing, too? They've got a super service department to keep everything running and let you have fun. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. You stop over and see them today. And also in that area... Boy, there's a lot of things going on in Rupert this week and the next week. I want to really mention some really nice, nice people that I've had a chance to work with for quite a few years, and that's Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. And, boy, they're so dedicated and so accessible and so devoted to helping you at Cameron and Siemens Insurance with your life insurance, your health insurance, your retirement planning, your employee benefits. All you have to do is just call and make an appointment. Yeah, it's that simple, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Really great folks. Kind of a sinister note. Well, we'll take this call. Good morning, caller. Thank you. You're on the air. Yeah, you said we could talk about anything. Yep, real quick. I got three minutes left in this segment. Go ahead. Okay, the way I feel about things, I'm not a computer genius or anything like that, but I think this online stuff like Amazon and that sort of thing is destroying America. And especially like in our area, uh, these small businesses are trying to survive and give us the services that we need, and we're denying them that. What is wrong with people? You know, I I agree with you. I have a tendency to agree with you that it's taken away from the actual going into a store and buying and going into a store and getting to know somebody as a uh, customer. I agree with you. Yeah, but it's not, it doesn't end there. Those people are going to be out of business. Yeah. So you couldn't go there if you wanted to. Yeah, that's exactly right. if you're disabled or something and don't have a car... What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, You know, I'm not exactly happy like you, Keith, about the way society is going with what they call social improvements, etc. And a lot of times, every day at the end of my program, you hear me say the way things were are the way things ought to be. I think we lived in a better lifestyle and were more compatible with each other years ago than what we are now. Well... We knew if we got out and we worked hard, we might even be promoted in our job, and also we might be able to put more food on the table. It was a challenge, and it was a great challenge. Well, and I think we were at, as a society, 30, 40 years ago or more, we were kind of like the Saturday evening post cover, you know, of uh, the families going to church together, the families sitting down and eating together, the families visiting together, the families going to a park or fishing together. And we've kind of lost that, and I don't know if it's ever going to be brought back again, but I pray that it does. Well, I do too, but this Amazon, which I never have use because I don't do the computer at all, but they're one of our worst enemies, if you want to come down to it. Now they're going to buy Whole Foods, and they're going to 
and in case people who don't know what whole foods are, it's the organic things, yeah. you know, that are supposed yeah. to be good for us. Mm-hmm. And they're going to probably ruin that for the people who are selling uh, organic foods because they'll probably cheapen it up just like they do other things. And then once they eliminate you, then the price goes to the ceiling. Yeah, and then I see the day in the not-too-distant future where they've got these larger-sized drones that they'll just stick your order from the grocery store in a basket under the drone. The drone will fly over your driveway and come down, drop it off, and sayonara, there's your food. I, I don't like that. I don't think, I, I don't want to be that way. I want to go to the grocery store. I want to sit and watch the people get out of their cars. I want to see fender benders. I want to go in and enjoy the people. I want to go to the grocery store. Yeah, and let's remember while we do have these grocery stores to put our card away when we get done. Yeah, amen. Got to run, Keith. Thank you. God bless. You know, I made a challenge to you here some time back. Anytime you see me not putting that cart back, I want you to tell the world. I will. I will. You know, that's to you because as handicapped as you are, you still know what is right. And you will put that cart back every time. No, I never use that phrase. I, I never use that phrase, handicapped. I am not handicapped whatsoever. I've got a physical challenge that I've overcome, and uh, everybody else that I know feels the same way. So, Keith, God bless you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Hey, don't forget Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200. And they invite you to come by and take a tour. Find out exactly how beautiful this place is. They've got a beautiful patio in the backyard, and they have barbecues and all kinds of outdoor fun things to do, and they go to various uh, community events. They are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minnesota cash area they're small compared to some but with a bigger heart than most autumn haven assisted living center in rupert 436 3200 right now let's go to the phone line and i believe we have a lovely lady on the program with us this morning that's been here many times in the past hello rachel alexander with the stream how are you I'm doing great, thanks. You know, I ask you this every time, but you moved down to Arizona, and uh, I'm going to be kind of snide when I say, how's the weather there this morning, Rachel? You guys just love rubbing it in. Oh, my gosh, we are in the second week of a heat wave, and it's been, you know, temperatures approaching 122 degrees, and all I see locally, and even Drudge has been linking to, uh, these articles about people, you know, baking cookies on the pavement behind their stores and, and eggs and things like that. You know, i got to ask you this, though, uh, Rachel, about Arizona and the heat and everything else. Uh, it, it must have been great if you would have taken a lot of money out of your savings account and invested it at the Wall Street on uh, deodorant companies. Yeah, there's certain areas you can pretty much forget, you know, like school business. Um, oh, my. Anything related to the heat, you're going to make a fortune around here because it's uh, it, it gets bad. And I noticed when I was at the gym on Sunday, um, there was hardly anybody there. Yeah. It's like people don't want to even get out and drive around. You know, really, now, I've been to Arizona many, 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 many times, some of which in the summertime and most of which early in the spring. We go down for a month in February. But uh, Arizona, this isn't normal for them to have this kind of heat for this while, and it looks like it's going to be ending in the next couple of days. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it is. What are, what's your forecast? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he, what you're saying is right. This is this is like the second week that's going to be bad. But you have to keep in mind, you know, the rest of summer, it's still going to be brutal. It's still going to be above yeah. 90 and and mostly above 100 um, till the end of August. And then in September, you know, you, you get 90s maybe, but, you know, that's it's still pretty hot all the way up until the end of October is the sweet spot. Yeah, and then, you know, you can sit there on your back porch and you can make fun of us up here in the Northwest. Oh, 
I know. I love you guys back in the Northwest. Uh, my b- boyfriend was just asking me today, you know, someday down the road we got to, you know, uh, have a house up there, a summer home. And, you know, and I was, I was like, you know, I always wanted to do that for for 20 years. I'm insane. I'm going to have a summer home up there. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about a great article. And by the way, I want to compliment you, Rachel. You do a great art, uh, job writing for the stream. And this story about a school, a Christian school, that basically was snubbed for any improvements on their playground, and uh, the left thought that was okay because they were trying to complete the uh, sentence of uh, making sure there was a separation of church and state. But the Supreme Court said that the the state must fund religious institution. Tell us more about this. Yeah, and this is a landmark case for religious liberty because not only did the Supreme Court say you can't discriminate against this religious institution, this Christian preschool that this church runs, but you must fund them. The Supreme Court has never said that before. You must fund them. Um, what happened was this Christian preschool applied for a state grant to improve the surface of its playground. And the state said, nope, because you're a church, we are not going to let you have this grant. And it violates this Blaine Amendment from our state constitution, which prohibits religious funding, um, excuse me, prohibits state funding to religious institutions. Well, the Supreme Court smacked that decision down six to two with even the liberal, a couple liberal justices siding with the conservatives because they said, um, this is not money going to a religious purpose. This is money going to a secular purpose. And if you deny money for just a, you know, generic, harmless, secular purpose like paving the uh, playground, then you can deny uh, services like the police coming out to respond to something or the, uh, the, the firemen's coming to respond right you you know and really it was basically now correct me if i'm wrong on this story because i followed this story for quite some time about trinity lutheran school uh it was a safety issue and you can't deny safety access to anybody in this country that's right think about um uh, a sidewalk what if there was a sidewalk you know uh that's part of the the church property and, 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 the, and the city helps you by paving it and there's cracks developing in the sidewalk, you know, someone who maybe doesn't even go to the church could be walking by in front of the church and trip on that sidewalk. Yeah. You know, what does this do, though, for other stories that we've had on our program? And I'm thinking about the cake baker that did not want to and said no, that they would not bake a cake for a gay wedding, which I said on the air at that time, if I have a business, I should have and reserve the right to do business with whom I want to. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Are you referring to the Supreme Court saying it's going to accept one of those cases yes 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 yeah um basically uh, there's two things going on here i find this very interesting that they accepted cert um the first thing going on is the supreme court is going to come down one way or the other and usually when you have it, it tends to be when you've got a court ruling against something over and over again the lower courts which they've done they've ruled against this uh these these, these uh, bakers couple um, over and over again, usually that would be a sign that the Supreme Court is going to shut all these rulings down and say, no, you know, we're going to find in favor of this couple. However, um, Anthony Kennedy, the swing vote on the Supreme Court, uh, tends to side and come down on the LGBT side of LGBT issues. So my gut instinct is the court is probably not going to rule favorably for that couple. Well, let me ask you this, Rachel, and you and I have talked about a wide array of stories over the many, many times on this program, but if you hang a sign on the front door that says, we reserve the right to refuse service, no shirt, no shoes, no service, etc., those type of things, why then can't a company say, hey, listen, uh, baking a cake for a gay or lesbian wedding is against my religious beliefs, however, I will refer you 
to another cake baker down the street. Thank you for coming in, etc. I think I should still have the right to do business with whom I want to. Yeah, I mean, you're going down a slippery slope, and, you know, I can try to predict uh, and get inside the mind of Anthony Kennedy. I mean, the only thing I can see him distinguishing it is by saying, well, if you're LGBT, that's not a choice. That's like, you know, skin color. You can't change that. I disagree. Whereas if you're going to be wearing a T-shirt and shorts, that's not, that, that is something you can change. You can put on pants. You can put on shoes. Um, you know, if you're a if, if you're a conservative and some left wing establishment doesn't want to serve you, well, you can change your conservative views and you can become a liberal. Um, that's the only way I can see them distinguishing this. Well, wait a minute. And, but then, of course, you get into the messy issue of, you know, is LGBT really a choice or not? I think there's a defining so, point there, though. It's getting into a really murky area, and I don't think the decision is going to be very pretty when it comes out. Well, I, there's a defining point in your conversation that you were just making, though. If you go into a store and ask for something like the exclusivity of a cake to be made for a gay wedding, that's a lot different than going into a restaurant and just sitting down and picking up the menu. Nobody's going to come over. Nobody's going to ask you about your sexual preference. They will serve you like everyone else. But when you specifically go in and demand that a cake baker bake a cake for a gay wedding, that is exclusivity, and I think that's the point of contention. That's a really brilliant uh, insight you bring there, and um, and that just shows the absurdity of it any any you know even more um, because the, the bakers have a religious conscientious uh, objection. So why are the bakers treated one way, but a restaurant is treated another way? Like, That's right. You can you know object to. Uh, gay weddings and own a restaurant and you're just fine you're off the hook but if you're you know a florist or a baker and you object to gay marriages then you are on the hook i mean it just seems like a double standard absolutely in the time remaining here this morning uh with your great ability to understand and really uh, perceive what's going on in a lot of stories you and i've talked about the travel ban that trump initiated and instigated with primarily six foreign countries in the middle east because of the severity of terrorism erupting from those countries i have been in favor of the travel ban i've said it's high time we start thinking about us and our security more so than other people coming in here. What are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the conservative justices on the Supreme Court agree with us. They think the full travel ban um, should be upheld. Um, and, you know, the federal law is very clear on this. It says if the president deems there's a threat to the country, he has the right to put a halt on immigration. Um, unfortunately, you've got enough liberals on the court that are, uh, and, and, and especially on the, these lower courts that struck down the travel ban, that they're saying, oh, this is discrimination um, on national origin, and, and, and that trumps, <laughs> ironic, that trumps um, Trump's ability underneath this federal law to stop immigration. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this is just an interim um, upholding of part of Trump's travel ban until we get to oral arguments this fall. My gut instinct on this one is because it's only a, a partial upholding of uh, Trump's travel ban, um, that's probably where the court is going to go ultimately with its decision. Yeah, but there's a caveat there, Rachel. If they're going to let the re-implementation of the travel ban start now, the 90 days will be up before they get to the Supreme Court ruling anyway. Yeah, I've thought about that. And, you know, I wonder... The whole reason for the 90 days is so that they can vet their procedures um, to, you know, check the backgrounds of these refugees better. And so my guess is um, Trump, you know, it's such a stodgy, you know, administration when you get to the federal government. In 90 days, they're probably not going to have fixed their procedures quickly enough. So Trump will probably just issue another executive order extending it, I would guess. 
You know, and really, I'm going to get right to the brass tacks, and I'm pretty blunt about it. I personally don't think they should have pulled the the uh, verbiage on Muslims in the first place. Yes, it's a Muslim travel ban. It isn't a bunch of Methodists and Episcopalians that have caused the trouble around the world, is it? Yeah, and it's sort of also ridiculous that some of these Supreme Court justices are, and, and, and lower court justices are, they, yeah, I don't know about the Supreme Court justices, but the lower courts were citing Trump's comments during the campaign where he said he was going to have a ban on Muslims. And even, even if you don't agree with that, um, that was wrong for the courts to look at Trump's out-of-court statements regardless, because... You know, Trump could have changed his opinion when he came out with his executive order. And, you know, he essentially did when he came out with the, the um, executive order. It didn't say this was a ban on Muslims anyways, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, and, and, you know, we can all just try to dance around the topic. But, right, everybody knows that, that Islamic extremism is, is what's causing the terrorism. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to paint you into a corner on a subject that you weren't prepared to speak on. But I, I know, as well versed as you are, you've got an opinion on this. Uh, a story that has really bugged me for quite some time is the way that uh, black educators at our universities across the United States are really causing divisiveness and bigoted attitudes in their classrooms. And now, two black professors have been fired for being racist and bigots and they've come out with things like uh, Otto Warm Beer got what he deserved or white privilege and the divisiveness and the racism that's being taught in our colleges in my opinion because I'm an old man Rachel is that it's almost as bad as it was when Selma Alabama and George Wallace were around yeah, that's the irony. I mean, they're absolutely bringing back segregation. We keep hearing of new ways they segregate. One of the latest is they're having separate college graduations for blacks. And, uh, you know, I was frankly surprised when one of those professors uh, got fired because what she said seems to be par for the course nowadays, where she said that Black Lives Matter gets to have their own protest space and white people aren't allowed in there. Too bad, so sad. And um, it's it's it's... It's, and, and they've got this new argument they're using now where they say that colorblindness actually causes racism. And, you know, I'm, uh, for me, I have a very different, unique perspective on this because my boyfriend's black, and he's a conservative. And, you know, he just thinks this stuff is absolutely outrageous, but they won't, they won't listen to him because he's just considered an, an Uncle Tom. And, and it's funny, too, when the left finds out that I have a black conservative boyfriend, it's almost like I don't exist because they don't want to admit that conservatives um, date, can date black people. It, they, it goes against their mantra, we're supposed to be all racist. Let me ask you this, and I talked about this at the entirety of last hour. When somebody says white privilege to you as a writer for the stream, what are the first thoughts that come into your mind about white privilege? And I'll share my thoughts with you after you explain it. What does that mean to you? Well, my first thoughts, you know, my initial thoughts are that, do you actually know what my ethnic background is before you say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and secondly, you know, if, if I've got white privilege, what about the privilege you have from, you know, say you're really good looking? Say you're really strong. You were born, you know. I mean, everybody. If you're going to say that, then everybody's got some kind of a privilege. And how do we decide which one is better than the other? I mean, I have so many negatives that go. If I did have white privilege, I think that uh, probably would outweigh a lot of the positive. I, I well, nobody, <laughs> nobody gave you, as far as I know from our past conversations, any silver spoon or a streamlined hallway through life so that you don't have to work, you don't have to worry about anything, nor did they me. And I'm sick and tired of having people look at us as Caucasians and yelling and screaming white privilege because I think that is an absolutely asinine and stupid thing to say. Oh, it's insulting. And, you know, I can tell you... You know, me and my black boyfriend sit around here, and we don't have any conversations. He's never once thought that I had some privilege that he didn't have, because it's just a non-issue. I believe it's something the left makes up in order to 
get people riled up against the right and think that the right is racist so that they vote Democratic. And they do this on purpose to make blacks especially think that the right is racist and the Democrats are the only ones who care. You know, we recognize this racism and this white privilege, which mostly comes up from the right. Absolutely. You know, Rachel, I really enjoy having you on the program. You can pick the basketball up and dribble down any court as far as any story is concerned. You did a really great job. One final thought here this morning, and I'm just kind of going through a a potpourri of different things. What are your thoughts, real quickly, about Seattle and that study up in Seattle showing and proving that the $15 minimum wage is a bust? Well, we've seen the signs all along. I mean, I was living up there when they, you know, passed the first one. I think it was just in the SeaTac area at first. And so, you know, we knew that was happening. You know, liberals always like to ignore history. So, you know, once the rest of us knew it was going to happen, they just pretended like they didn't know about that. And what I think is really telling now is they're trying to issue these revisionist articles saying that there really isn't job losses and, and people really aren't being hurt by it. So that they won't even admit it. They won't even admit that people are hurting because they just can't admit that their ways don't work. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question for you. Real fast, caller. I'm almost out of time. Go. Yes, uh, yesterday they found out that uh, black unemployment is, is at a 17-year low. And what we're seeing here is that what Donald Trump is doing and is try- and doing and having success, even though he's been beat to death by the media, is that he's having even the small things that he has done has raised consumer confidence in the black community, investor confidence in the black community. And uh, this is no accident that this is a 17-year low for black unemployment. I'll hang up. Uh, respond quickly, Rachel, and then I've got to run. Oh, yeah. Um, Basically, Obama could have, you know, brought everyone together as the first black president. Um, Instead, he did the opposite. He ginned up all kinds of, you know, resentment among blacks and whites, and he, he, you know, destroyed the economy. So, of course, blacks are going to get hurt pretty bad. Um, So the whole thing is just ironic, and thank goodness we've got Trump in office now. All right. Rachel Alexander, you're always welcome here. Thank you very much. Stay cool, my dear, and come back soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Rachel Alexander, great writer for the stream, and I always appreciate having her on the air. Nice, nice lady. Oh, my goodness. I've got to get the weather forecast on here. Zeb, you get to talking and not looking at the clock. Oh, my goodness. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company CPAs. They have been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. The best, the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting bookkeeping services, retirement planning, and two locations to serve you. One, of course, at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley. The other at 625th Street in Rupert. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather as we saddle up and ride again for today. And it's going to be a little bit on the breezy side. Not as bad as it was yesterday afternoon, but close. Winds out of the west. 15 to 25 miles an hour, holding steady at about 17, but mostly sunny skies, high of 82, with an overnight low of 54 tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies, we still have a chance of a stray shower or a thunderstorm, that is possible. High of 79, with an overnight low of 48, going to be windy for tomorrow as well. And then for Thursday, looks like mostly sunny skies, high close to 80. That's your weather for Zephyr the Ranch. Thank you, Gina, and it's brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. I know Leiden Crane really well, very fluent in Spanish and can offer any of the services there in Spanish. They are the best at what they do. Please get a hold of them today they can and will help you phillips oaks goodwin crane and company cpas serving the entirety of minicash area for over 50 years oh my goodness uh let's see we got a couple of minutes left i got time for another phone call 436-224-1866-927-4587 one of the big things if you want something else to add to your list of worry about it today north korea I was going to take some more time tomorrow morning on the first hour and discuss this. What do we do, or do we do nothing? 
Right now, North Korea, a complete rogue nation without any civility or humaneness, followed by any worldly rules or regulatory means, they don't care. I saw a little bit of that video where they had a woman tied with her hands tied and they were beating her to death. And what they did to our citizen, college student Otto Warmbier, shipping him home in a comatose state, and he, of course, died last week. North Korea, what do we do? Do we let them continue on their path? Do we let them develop all the nuclear atrocities? Do we let them continue these human atrocities? There's the question for you to mull over today. What do we do? Or do we do nothing? It's a real scary situation right now. I want to take the time and remind you about some more of the great merchants over in the Rupert area, of course, for the celebration of the 4th of July Independence Day. And they include Dixon Oil Company. These people are so nice. Every time there's something going on over in Rupert, they always want to add their name to the list of helping support it. Dixon Oil, 602 South 2nd and Rupert. And believe me, Daryl and the crew over there at Dixon Oil, they wish everybody to have a good time on Independence Day weekend. That's right. And it's a great service. Service station for you. Dixon Oil has been in the business since 1951. Dixon Oil in Rupert, along with Mad River Laser. Hello, Nicole, and everybody at Mad River Laser. 502 E Street, right on the square in Rupert. And they're going to have Christmas in July. Yeah, Christmas in July. They're going to have their entire Christmas line out in the store, and you can feel festive for the 4th of July and Christmas. All of this and more. They're going to have shirts and aprons and decorations, everything you might need or want, sale prices, get over there and enjoy Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. Oh my goodness, they're going to have a good time on the 4th of July weekend. Uh, Let's see what else have I got here real quick. Next hour, we have, of course, my dear, dear friend, Dr. History, of which has not opened the door and walked in yet. He's got me a little worried. Come on, Doc, if you're here. And then at 1030, we're going to be talking to Donna Murr from back in Wisconsin, and her family had uh, some of their land, private land, taken by the government. We're going to talk about that. And uh, we've got a big, big hour. You can hear the dog in the background. That is Ruby, and she is my doorkeeper. And she is now allowing Dr. History to come in, and if he turns his back on her, she will nip at the back of his calf. She's pretty good at that. And so Dr. History will be up next in the next half hour. I want to say thanks to everybody for your calls. And hello, Doc. How you doing this morning? And we'll take a little break right now and let Wheels play some music. We'll be back in seven minutes. Zeb at the Ranch on a Tuesday. We'll see you in a minute. Oh, don't bother us with music. We're having a conversation here. Dr. History and I were talking about the good old days. (laughs) The days of yore. Hey, welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Waste, always at your disposal. Call them 734-6969. Hey, wheels, old buddy, how about a good word for the Silver State Stampede. Nevada's oldest rodeo. The Silver State Stampede roars into Elko July 13th, 14th, and 15th for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA rodeo brings you the thrill of professional riders going head-to-head in one of the world's toughest sports, rodeo. The action kicks off Thursday with the annual kickoff party featuring mutton busted, Old West Bronc riding, tri-tip dinner for just 10 bucks, and an extra dose of the world-famous Ring of Fear. Head into Friday and Saturday for PRCA Rodeo Action with the award-winning Wild Child Rodeo Clown and Dance the Night Away with the Jeff Palmer Band. So gather your friends and get your tickets today for the 2017 Silver State Stampede, July 13th through the 15th. And don't forget to wear your pink for Tough Enough to Wear Pink Night on Saturday. Family entertainment at its best with the 2017 Silver State Stampede at the Elk 
Chicago County Fairgrounds. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the egg. There you go, Elko, Nevada. A lot of fun. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget Rupert Fourth of July celebration with a lot of the great merchants over there saying, come on over to Rupert. It's going to be a ripping good time like the Rupert Animal Clinic at 200 South Highway 24 in Rupert. It's a full-service facility servicing large and small animals. And don't forget, now is the time to vaccinate your horses for that West Nile virus. Yes, sir, it's not gone away. All the vaccinations, dental work, preventative care at Rupert Animal Clinic in Rupert. And Senator Kelly Anthon says, come on over to Rupert and enjoy all the festivities on the square. All the great fun, the food, the fireworks, everything at the Rupert Fourth of July celebration. Thank you, Senator Kelly Anthon. And Haruza Insurance at 723 South 3rd Street in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4420. And they can give you a quote on your commercial and business insurance, auto, home, life insurance, health insurance. They really want to work and serve you. Absolutely. Give them a call today, 436-4420. Haruza Insurance saying, come on over to Rupert for the 4th of July celebration. Okay. Here he is. We were talking about being old and acting old and still carrying on. Good morning, sir. How are you, Dr. History? Great day. What, are you turning your phone off? Well, because I don't want you to hear Bonanza (laughs) in the middle of this show. Oh, my. How are you? Great. Doing great. Good, good, good. What are we going to talk about today? Well, you know, last week I told you about our visit up to uh, Yellowstone uh, Island Park, Henry's Lake. Around uh, Ennis, Ennis, Montana. Montana, yeah, And the two ghost towns which really are not ghost towns, uh, mining towns of Virginia City and Nevada City. Now, there's still people living. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's businesses and a lot of things going on there. So definitely worth a visit over there. Uh, so you suggested we talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you. How far is it now for people that have never been there? Uh, they could jump in their car uh, this morning at 11 o'clock after my program's over, and they yes. could be up there by 4 or 5 this afternoon easy, couldn't okay. they? Okay, from here to Island Park. Is about three, three and a half hours. Yeah. And yeah. about another hour over to Ennis, Montana. There so, you go. Yeah. So, not that bad. Yeah. Anyway, so this is going to be, this is called Virginia City's Strange Chinese Trial. By the way, I have a question for you. Okay. How many Virginia cities were in the West? Well, I know there's the California one. And, and Nevada, Nevada right. and Montana. And Montana. Yeah. There so, you go. this is the one in Montana. So, Here's the way I'm going to start out with a disclaimer to our listeners in China. <laughs> if, uh, by the way, we do we do have, have listeners li- in China. We do, and uh, if this is um, how should we say it? If I need correcting on this, please get on my web page and send me some information that will help me understand this. You're trying to clear <laughs> off the doorstep before you even made a mess. Before I step in it, yeah. <laughs> I should have said. Anyway, okay, so here it is. We've got two men, two Chinese men. Okay. Now, you've got to keep track of these guys, Ed. Okay. First one is Ah Yen. Oh, wait a minute. i got to write this down. Ah Yen. Ah Yen. And Ah Wa. <laughs> and Ah Wa. wa. Uh, these oh, guys were, This is going to be a fun program. Yeah. These guys were up for murder, but the only thing resulted was the loss of white roosters and a lot of chicken pie. We, we, and don't even ask me yet. Okay. <laughs> I'll get to you. <laughs> I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> and we'll get there. So uh, that was just kind of uh, to whet your appetite a little here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. Here we go. So trials, you know, were always well attended during the early days in Montana Territory. Uh, housewives welcomed them as an escape from the monotony of housework and businessmen as an excuse for the middle-of-the-week holiday. It was an unwritten law that all businesses house all businesses closed down at some such times to uh, eliminate unfair competition. Now, it was not uncommon for many spectators to come equipped with a light bedding and basket lunches, which were placed on benches to establish a sort of a squatter's right for the duration of an unusual or lengthy court case. So this was the entertainment, Zeb, back then, is a trial. Especially really? if it was a murder trial. Well, well, it was kind of the same way in some of the parts of the Old West when they had a Hanging. hanging. Oh, yeah. yeah. You bet. Bring your lunch. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> Bring your lunch? I'd have lost mine. <laughs> so, anyway, the so called Chinese trials in Virginia City was in 1879 and 1880, and this is a great example of this kind of entertainment. 
Now, it was held in a log cabin courthouse large enough to accommodate about a third of the citizens that wanted to get in. How many? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't say. But they were without question one of the most irregular to come before a territorial jury. Okay. The, uh, so the crime responsible for the first trial was conceived in Virginia City's Chinese Temple. Now, uh-huh. I'm going to show you a picture of that okay. in just a second. Now we're talking about Ah Yen and Ah Wah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, this Chinese Temple was a combination, kind of a fraternity house, a church, a gambling place, a place where the Chinese could just kind of go in and be yeah, among you're, their You're own. in trouble. You oh, stepped in and that's it That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. But this impressive landmark, which stood at the entrance of Virginia City was an, kind of an unexpected bit of the Orient and really out of place in Virginia really? City. Okay. But let me show you a picture of that. All right. See that? Holy, it's not a bad looking building no, at all. No, two stories. Two and, stories, got a porch on it and yeah, everything. Yeah, railing. Lawn chairs railing. out in front. Yeah. So anyway, so it was at the center of this Chinese social activity and no expense had been spared in this building. I mean, they yeah. Everything into it. So anyway, during the daytime, the occupants were overworked. You know, these guys really worked hard. They did. And they were, unfortunately, they were hated by most of the white miners who resented them for their ability to grub out fortunes, which they themselves had left in their search for greener pastures. But they, the whites still allowed them in that area to go ahead and build this. Right. And... A lot of times, the Chinese would go through the tailings, and they would find gold nuggets that had gone through, uh, that had been missed by the by the white miners. Ah, so. so they, yeah, so they actually could become quite wealthy. Yeah, well, now so. Here they were during the day working real hard. So at night, inside the sanctity of their temple, the Chinese were, they were important. And it was here that they kind of socialized and counseled and actually sat in judgment upon guys that were not doing what they were supposed to. There was one large room housed uh, a variety of Chinese gods. Another room was divided to ceremonies suited to the Chinese. And another room paid their respects to Buddha. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, that their uh, <laughs> prosperity might be assured for a long time. Yeah. And several rooms were also reserved for the comfort of those who wished to just drift off into La La Land uh, uh, with the fumes of the red poppy. And uh, that red poppy was fairly prominent. It was a it, prominent poppy. It was called opium. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, murder was said to have been committed within the temple walls, okay, inside. Now, how many murders were covered up? No white man. Never Wait, knew. They actually killed people inside the temple. Well, we'll get. Yeah, let me keep going. Here. Okay, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, to be sure, there were many mysterious deaths, but whether bearing friend or foe, the Chinese always conducted themselves with pomp and ceremony. Friends and enemies followed the corpse to the grave under a shower of red paper strips. Now, these paper strips were designed to frighten away any lurking devils. Uh-huh. Okay, So that was just kind of a traditional send-off. I the guess. guy's dead. Yeah. So, But it was a good send-off to the ancestors. Yeah, it sounds like a real fun time. <laughs> so anyway, to questions asked by s- some of the white men concerning a sudden death, the standard statement was that the deceased had met death by choking on a chicken bone. Oh, well, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. So, he, you know, that was the standard how they died. When are you going to get to the roost? Oh, we're, we're getting there. We're okay. getting there. Now, okay, now keep track of this, Zeb. Okay. There were six Chinese companies. Okay. So I can only assume that's like a, six Chinese groups. Okay. Okay. That operated in Alder Gulch right there. Yeah. And every Chinese in the Gulch was a member of one or the other of these six. That doesn't sound like it would be a good okay. idea. But it was never definitely known that the Virginia City companies were connected with the six great Chinese tongs that they were called in San Francisco. Are, are you telling been, me they're kind of like unions? Well, brotherhoods or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. They think that these six in Virginia City were hooked into the ones in San Francisco. So if you were in the wrong bunch of dudes, you could end up in trouble. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So anyway, at the head of each of these companies was uh, what they called a martinet, and his word was law among his followers. Yeah. Okay, the members' quarrels were settled not by themselves, but by the head men. Quarrels caused by differences over leases, uh, ground, uh, gradually it grew into two factions, okay? So the four companies lined themselves together against two. Uh Uh-oh, that doesn't sound fair. So now we've got two 
groups. Bring on the roosters. Okay, <laughs> we're getting there. Now, the white residents of Virginia City described these factions as the four company and the two company. Okay, are you still with me? No, I'm not. I, for some reason, my team got locked in the locker room. <laughs> okay, all right. We're down to two men yeah. and two companies. Ah, Yen and Awa. The four company and the two company. Yeah. All right. I wonder if the listeners are having a hard time I, following I hope not. This. I'm trying okay. to go slow. Okay. <laughs> now, there was a feeling of intense hatred that developed, and unable to settle their differences peaceably, they engaged in open warfare. Okay. When the two-company group secured control of a choice lease of, of unusually rich ground, which the four-company had tried to get. Okay, so we got two against four, but the two are winning. So far. Okay. So here we got... Okay. <laughs> Maybe I just should quit trying to explain this and just keep going. Okay, so here we go. A conference, a conference was held by the heads of the four-company in which they came to the decision that the two-company should either surrender this lease or fight. Okay, now, okay. We're, now we're getting down to a street gang here. Yes, yes. Okay, okay so the two-company group replied to the demand by entrenching themselves about the ground in question, so they're up on this ground that they want to keep. Each man in two-company was supplied with a rifle and a considerable amount of ammunition. Okay. Now, the four company also armed its men, and the battle was on. You uh, still haven't brought the chickens oh, in. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> How much time do we have? Okay. Not enough. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're, it's a desperate fight. Uh, for two days, the gulch was under constant fire. There were about 200 men fighting on the side of the two company, and about 400 men fighting on the other side. And nobody's winning. No. People coming into or leaving Virginia City found it necessary to detour over the hills to avoid the battle zone. Well, how would you drive through the canyon if <laughs> well, they're shooting just, at each other? Well, you just go around. Take so, a chicken. Yeah. Now, thousands of shots were exchanged, but owing to the poor marksmanship of the participants, there were no casualties. And not even a powder burn. <laughs> You're kidding. Now, at last, all the ammunition was I gone. I know where you're headed. They shot the chickens. Not, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so all the ammunition was gone. No victory for either side. Now, the four company decided to revert to an ancient Chinese warfare. Its members sharpened shovels, pitchforks, and pikes. And for added appeal, the warriors wore these ferocious-looking masks. Holy smokes. Now the Halloween on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the two companies serve, uh, actually suffered two casualties. Really? There was a small two-company Chinese man who was running down the gulch, being chased by a tall four-company man, yeah, yeah, armed yeah. with a sharpened shovel. The small man finally stumbled and fell, and the adversary removed his head with a shovel. You come up with some of the most pleasant <laughs> Sounding stories. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you so, still haven't got the chickens oh, in here. We're, we're getting there. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll have okay. time. Now, hearing about the shovel casualty, the sheriff of Madison County decided that enough was enough. A posse was organized and dispatched to the scene of the battle. A band of 40 Chinese were placed under arrest and housed in the Virginia City Jail. An investigation followed the arrest, and as a result, two members of the four company, Awa, and Ayan yeah, I remember them. were charged with murder. Yeah. So a, a preliminary hearing was said, held. And, and, and they were with the four company? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, the hearing opened with a mob of Chinese witnesses, and each was requested to swear upon the Bible to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's where we're going to run into a problem. The chickens. We're getting there. <laughs> so... They talked all right, but they talked about everything except the subject of the murders. And in combination with Chinese and pig, pigeon English, uh, the questions put to them Now were, you're talking about pigeons. I know. The questions put to them were politely and definitely evaded, and the prosecution got nowhere. Anyway, after a day and a half of this, it was suggested that two Chinese interpreters be, be brought in from San Francisco. Oh, right. So here we go. The interpreters arrived, and they said, hey, what's the trouble? What's going on here? They asked the judge. The judge said, well, says these men won't tell the truth, even on the witness stand. Well, the Chinese people were very honest. They said uh, they have uh, taken the oath to tell the truth, or have they taken the oath to tell the truth? And he said, well, they swear on the Bible to tell the truth, and then they carry on like nobody can understand them. So the interpreter said, well, 
He says, you don't know anything about the white man's, they don't know anything about the white man's Bible. So what he said, here's the chicken, Zeb. You must obtain a freshly killed white rooster, then ask each witness to dip his fingers in the blood, after which you will get the truth. Okay. Yeah. I'm... And again, to our Chinese listeners, let me know. <laughs> that, uh, I, I'm just not sure oh, how reliable this is. Don't worry about offending anybody. I do it every day. Okay. Well, anyway, the judge agreed to this procedure. Okay. okay. But soon discovered a drawback to it. There were a hundred witnesses and not enough uh, of the special birds to go around. The sheriff sent his deputies out to round up poultry, and before the hearing started, the jail yard was filled with crates of white roosters. That they all had to... And each witness was sworn in. He would be led out into the yard, the head of a white rooster chopped off, and in the blood of the freshly killed rooster, he would be sworn to tell the truth. And as the trial proceeded, the jail yard took on the appearance of a slaughterhouse. And It was um, kind of the old day Colonel Sanders, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> And, but everybody had their fill of chicken pie. Now, at the end of the hearing, the magistrate uh, bound Ah Wa and Ah Yen over to the grand jury. The grand jury indicted them for murder, and shortly afterwards, they were tried in the district court. Now, the accused murderers were defended by Colonel Sanders. Are you making this up? I'm not making this up. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Anyway, at the trial, the rooster oath, uh, having served its purpose, was dispensed with uh, to the chagrin of the chicken fanciers. Now, how many chickens did they do away well, with? Well, they had at least 100 witnesses. So, Holy smokes. But anyway, why did they have to have a fresh bird for every one? Uh, I don't know that. That's why I'm hoping we get some oh. uh, insight from our some of our listeners in China. Holy anyway, smokes. They uh, were declared guilty, and they were given the death sentence. Uh-oh. Now, a jury uh, actually only had 11 people, which was actually unconstitutional. You're supposed to have 12. Yeah. So a new trial was ordered. One of them was out there plucking chickens. <laughs> yeah. So Awa and Ayin were returned to the county jail, and it took a year before they came up for trial again. Holy smokes. Now, in the meantime... A new prosecuting attorney was in office. A new district judge was on the bench. The two prisoners were brought into court by the sheriff. Now, uh, here's quote uh, what the defense said. Are you ready to proceed with the trial of Awa and Ayen? The judge questioned. The prosecuting attorney said, I am, Your Honor. But one of the attorneys for the defense then arose and said, Your Honor, he said, this is a trial for murder. The rule of the law is that when a man is on trial for his life, he must be present. Otherwise, the proceeding will not stand. So, are these persons not the defendants, Ah Wah and Ah Yen, who are charged with murder? Asked the judge. They are not our clients, stated the attorneys for the defense. The prosecuting attorney, who had not been present at the first trial, admitted he didn't know who they were. Oh, my goodness. The sheriff was called into the courtroom when questioned. He admitted he didn't know who they were. So the uh, defense attorney said, Your Honor, all, uh, these Chinese tend to look somewhat alike, and if these men are not the defendants, I don't know who they are. Now, Go ask a chicken. Yeah, so the Chinese interpreters were called before the court as well as the head men of all the six companies and all affirmed that the prisoners were not the men accused of murder. you got to be kidding me. The prisoners had been released. Holy cow. Anyway, so afterward, the true facts of the mystery of the mixed-up defendants came out. The quarreling companies, the four company and the two company, had yeah. kind of come together, yeah. united. <clears throat> Best buddies. To save the lives of the men in jail. Yeah. So while in jail, the prisoners, had, they had a lot of visitors and two Chinese uh, about the same size and general appearance as the prisoners visited them in their cells. And while making their visit, they changed clothes. The murderers who casually walked out of jail... Before the eyes of the jailer, they escaped, and once they got out of jail, because they just kept on going. You're kidding. So, as a result, there were no defendants to prosecute and uh, no trial. So, <laughs> the only real result of the court activities was that the sheriff lost his job, there was a shortage of white roosters, and the country was out several hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, i got to tell you, of all the stories that you've had on this program, I'm really tired. <laughs> I, 
well, I know it stressed your your our both of our mental. I mean, capacity. I was trying to go from Ayen to Awa and to Four company. company and Two Company and a bunch of dead chickens and yeah. holy smoke. So my question to our listeners in China is: This something that just was a custom here yeah. in Virginia City among these two groups? Or is that something that came from the old country? Don't you feel like China? you're opening up a big hole here? I am, but I want to know the truth. I don't know if I do. <laughs> Holy smacks. Anyway. i gotta, I got to think about this for yeah. a while. And I hope that you have a less, um, what do I want to say, involved story next week. But, you know, the Chinese were a huge help in the United States. Oh, they were. I mean, the building they of the were. railroad, the mining, they, they were a huge help in settling Bad the West. for the chicken industry. Yeah. <laughs> well, fresh chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, I'm tired, man. Stay with us just a minute. I'll be right with That's Doctor History, brought to you, of course, by uh, me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to have more with him in just a minute. i got to visit before he leaves the studio this morning. But I want to say thank you also to a segment we have on Thursdays, and that's called Cache County School Days, brought to you by A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley, and everything for the baby, all the birthday presents and all the clothing and the cribs and the changers and the car seats, everything right there at A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley. And along with... The Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley, 677-8888. For all of your outpatient surgeries like cataract surgeries, colonoscopies, etc., call them and save money, 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center in a child's world, bringing you school days in Cache County on Thursdays at 1010. Right now, I'm going to sit back and mull over the fact that a whole bunch of chickens got killed this last half hour. We'll be back with... With more in just a few minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436 2244 or toll free 1 866 927 4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, my goodness sakes, welcome back to our last half hour on the program this morning. And uh, I'm going to get a chance right now to go back to my home state of Wisconsin and talk to a lovely lady about a major problem that their family had when the Supreme Court just recently ruled against a property rights claim. And we have with us on the phone, good morning, Donna Murr. How are you? Good morning. Well, I guess I could say I've been better. <laughs> well, you know, I can understand that. But uh, Donna, what part of Wisconsin are you in as we make this call? Sure. I am in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, about 90 miles east of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. I have been there many, many times. I was born and raised further south from you in a little town called Fort Atkinson. Sure. Well, we're old Wisconsinites, so feel comfortable on this program. What happened to you to have your case go all the way to the Supreme Court? What were you and your family trying to do with your property that all of a sudden just opened up a big can of worms? <laughs> well, I've got a pretty big and a very strong family. So we've, uh, we're fortunate enough that back in the early 1960s, my parents bought a beautiful piece of property on the St. Croix River near Hudson, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And they built a cabin for the family to enjoy for, for many years. We still have the cabin today, and we just love spending time there. Uh, a few years after they built the cabin, they bought an adjacent parcel right next door to the cabin to use as an investment. Uh, my parents dreamed about building a retirement home on it someday or my dad used to call it the rainy day fund, that someday he'd sell that property as an investment if he needed to. Um, so time went on, and, and the entire development that we bought our property in got developed. There were 66 lots along the river, and the whole um, subdivision got developed, and we held on to our property, and the property value continued to go up every year. Mm -hmm. um, but our cabin was on the river, which means we get flooded from time to time. So... Back in 1994, my parents got ill, and they weren't able to use the cabin anymore, so they gave it to my brothers and sisters and I, and, and, and so that was wonderful. We took over the financial responsibilities and continued to use the cabin. 
the following year, they gifted us the adjacent parcel as well. So in 1995, we then became the owners of both the cabin and the owner of the adjacent lot. Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, we got flooded quite a bit, and we got flooded in 2000, and we decided we wanted to fix up the cabin and and move it away from the river and, and do some major improvements so we wouldn't get flooded anymore. So my brothers and sisters and I decided we would sell that investment parcel, the, the empty lot that um, was worth about $400,000. We could use that money then to fix up the cabin. So we went into the county and we told them about our plans, and they said to us, well, you can't sell that piece of property. You only have one piece of property. And we just kind of scratched our head and said, well, that doesn't make any sense. There's two parcels. We get two property tax statements. You tell us that our empty investment property is worth $400,000 and our cabin is worth $450,000, and we want to sell the parcel for 400000 And he said, we're sorry. We changed some ordinances back in 1976 or thereabouts, and you only have one piece of property. So we didn't like that answer. Mm. <laughs> we got our dander up, and we said, well, that's not fair. Um, we want to challenge this, and we would like to sell the property, and we feel our rights have been violated, and we feel pretty strongly about that, that we're grandfathered in under the ordinances. We step into the same shoes of our parents, and they were able to build or sell the property, and we felt pretty darn strongly that we could build or sell the property as well. So we went to court, and the district court threw our case out on summary judgment. They didn't even listen to it. Um, the appeals court in Wisconsin, the three court or three judge panel, they sided against us, and they said, "Yes, you only have one parcel," and we didn't like that answer either. <laughs> so we appealed to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, and they didn't hear our case either. So we weren't ready to back down. We felt so strongly that our Fifth Amendment rights had been violated that we were entitled to just compensation. If the government is going to take your property for the common good, they the Fifth Amendment says they're supposed to pay you for it. So right. we didn't want us to build on it. We felt pretty strongly we had a, a takings claim. So we did some research, and by the grace of God, we found the Pacific Legal Foundation, which is a, a nonprofit organization that helps families and, and those who can't fight big government, because let's face it, it costs a lot of money to get us where we got on our own, and that's because we had six families. <laughs> right. Six families all paying the bill together to allow us to take it as far as we could. But by that point, you know, we were exhausted financially and, and, and physically. So the Pacific Legal Foundation recognized the injustice of our case, and they took our case for free, which is what they do. Right. Um, they petitioned the United States Supreme Court. And again, by the grace of God, the Supreme Court selected our case for review, which is in the and of itself like winning the lottery because they pick about 70 cases a year out of 10,000. Mm -hmm. So that was truly an honor for them to pick our case. But then, ah, last Friday, the court ruled against us on a 5-3 to three vote, and they also feel that we only had one lot, and uh, so um, that's how it ended up. So well, we're, we're quite devastated and disheartened by the decision. We still feel very strongly that that we're right, um, and we're trying to digest what happened because we still can't believe it. You know, Donna, um, you're taking this you know, you're taking this a lot better than I would, but I do have some questions to ask you at this juncture. Uh, and wheels over at the main studio, watch that uh, feedback a little bit, if you would, please. Number one, if you were paying two separate property taxations, are there records showing that there were two separate taxations? And if the county changed the ordinances, were you notified about these changes from the two combining it to one? No. So we were we received two statements up until 2010 or 2011 when we first um, had the the adverse ruling. Then the assessor came through and, and changed the assessments. But from 1960, well, actually 1963 was when my parents bought the second lot. We had gotten two statements, two assessments. We paid two separate bills, and each was treated as a separate parcel. And that, I mean, that's the part that, you know, no one can understand. And that 
what makes you bang your head against the wall is that, you know, how can that be fair? So when I questioned that back in the early 2000s and I said, I don't understand why you're assessing me for a $400,000 piece of property, which now you're telling me is worthless. And they told me it was my job to object to the statement. And I said, why would I object? I agree with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gladly paying you the taxes I feel are due on a very valuable piece of property. Why would I question what I agree with? And they turned it around back at me and blamed me for not speaking up. And I just... <laughs> I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. Well, Donna, you know, you or anyone else, myself included, I mean, why would you object to something that has been in an occurrence in the family for many years? And number two, when the Supreme Court justices looked at this, it sounds almost shabby and shoddy the way they treated you and your family. Did they not see that the records were the uh, two parcels and that the county had changed the ordinance without any notification? I mean, right there, there there should be enough flies in the milk to throw this out. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the part about getting no notification is really something that bothers me because they seem to want to say, we should have known, we should have known. And like I said before, I truly believe anybody in the country that inherits property from their parents, you're not going to say, well, wait, let me do my research. I think I better make sure that the ordinance is didn't change on me. Nobody assumes that. You assume you step into the shoes of your parents. Right. That you have the same grandfathered rights that they had. So we certainly received no notification. My parents were still alive back in the time the ordinance changed. They never received any kind of notification. They had always told us we could build on that property, and they always received two statements. So there was nothing, you know, kind of buyer beware, hey, we're changing the rules on you. No. Nobody was given any notification, and the court certainly had all the information. They had all of our property records. They knew we had been assessed on both properties separately. They knew that our our appraiser said what happened would happen, which is that if you merge the properties together, that four hundred thousand dollar property is going to drop down to being worth forty thousand, and that's what happened. That's what we're being assessed at now. Oh my! They dropped the value by over four hundred thousand once they combined the properties. But the justices didn't believe our expert witness. They believed the county and the state's expert witness that said the value of the combined properties will not go down, and they said that because we were going to get increased privacy the value wouldn't go down. And that, to us, is absolutely ridiculous, and it's proven to be not true because the value is in the ability to build on the property. It's not in privacy. That's right. <laughs> you can't build on the property. It goes from being worth 400000 down to forty because the privacy is only worth 40000 So it, it, it's mind-blowing to me to, to, to think the justices didn't even consider our expert witness and they gave the state's expert witness the benefit of the doubt that the value wouldn't go down and anybody who wants to look on St. Croix County's website on the valuations it's all on there it's all public record and you can see that you know it dropped by over 400,000 as a result (laughs) we pay instead of paying $12,000 a year in property taxes we only pay $6,000 in property taxes now yeah. because it's not buildable. And, the, and so we just are hitting our heads against the wall that this could be messed up so badly. Let me, let me ask you the... So there's an unjust decision in our, our opinion, and we just aren't accepting it. It's just too hard to, to accept. I agree with you totally. Let me ask you this, Donna. Do you think in your family, do they also agree with this thinking, that there is much more of an underlying reason as to why this happened? It sounds to me like there was no room for negotiation. It sounds like it was a slam dunk, if you will, for the county and the state of Wisconsin. Do you feel that you absolutely had doors slammed in your face for maybe an underlying reason? Well, I mean, we certainly had our... The door slammed all along. All of our meetings with the county, they were always looking at what I guess would always seem to be some type of an environmental reason. Um, But we're in a residential development that was 
approved and platted in the late 1950s. It happens to be on the river. We love and protect the river. There's nothing common sense that it was applied to any of the situation where if you would look up and down the river as far as you can see, there literally is a house on every lot except for ours. I mean, we were singled out and not treated fairly. It's not like we're in northern Wisconsin, which I know you're familiar with, with many open spaces and maybe some lakes that maybe only have one or two cabins on it. This is the Twin Cities metropolitan area that's well-developed, and one more small home isn't going <laughs> to ruin the environment. Absolutely. We would always just be so frustrated that they, nobody could take a step back and realize common sense should prevail and that, that we should be allowed to move forward. And so that underlying reason from the county, what they would always say is, you know, you, we don't want any more development on the river because of, you know, environmental and protection and that kind of thing. And if you read the National Scenic Riverways Act, it specifically says it is not intended to prohibit development. Yeah. And so they're not even following the rules. Yet, you know, everybody wants to keep the river clean. By all means, we do as well. But that's why we've lived there for 57 years. We love it. Absolutely. And, um, but then you got to take a step back and be realistic and understand when people's rights are being violated. So now, basically, you have these two parcels of, of property that the Supreme Court has uh, dedicated as one, and you have this property at a diminished value. What are you going to do? What do you want to do? Or what can you do? Well, we've got a few ideas floating around in our heads. Um, I am meeting with a state representative tomorrow morning who is very eager to help us to perhaps get the laws changed in Wisconsin. If you don't like the laws, get them changed, right? Right, right, right. Um, I was certainly hoping to make an impact on a national level, which is what the Supreme Court could have done. Um, but we're not ready to throw in the towel by any means. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to do when when you still feel so strongly that an injustice has been done. So I'm going to meet with my local representatives, like I said, one of them tomorrow and a few of them um, later this month. And there's some real interest in getting some legislation passed or at least some bills introduced that would say things like, you know what, if you inherit property from a family member, you step into their shoes. It's okay to have a substandard small cabin on a lake. I mean, the government has said several times, we would rather see you build a McMansion. And we just scratch our head and say, why would they want bigger homes? And who are they to tell us what size home we should have? There you go. So, you know, you're being from Wisconsin, you know, there's lovely small lakes with lots of lovely small cabins. That, that's, that's normal. And to try to prevent that from continuing... Um, so that's what we're looking to have changed, that, you know, when you inherit property, when you receive a gift of property from your parents or your grandparents, if you want to pass along a family legacy, that that's okay, that you can have a small cabin, and there, you shouldn't have to worry about your property being merged. I mean, this whole thing about merging two properties into one without your permission seems just so unfair. Yeah. yeah. Why that's allowed, I still don't understand that whole merger. <laughs> you know, Donna, I'm almost... Without your permission makes no sense to me, and I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, some good of our case comes out and that other people will have their eyes open that, yeah, the government can merge your properties, and they don't have to tell you about it. They can just do it. You know, let me ask you, Donna, this question at this point. It sounds to me like you have a great personality, a very bubbly, happy personality, but this must have jaded you and your family to some degree where you're very concerned about what really private property rights mean to Americans because you have been hurt by this process. What did you learn? What, what do you think that you'll take from this and try to do better in the future? Well, first of all, thank you for mentioning my bubbly personality there like i mentioned there's six families there's about 30 of us that all share the cabin and i'm the spokesperson for a reason <laughs> <laughs> some of my family members aren't as calm and and cool as i am right now 
and uh, it has been very difficult. It, it can make you quite angry. It can make you feel jaded, and that's the word you use, and I, I like that. You do feel jaded and, and singled out, but I always try to find some kind of positive and everything negative, but at the same time, um, we're all willing to move forward and invest some more time and energy, and in, in, even though we have been hurt by this. Um, you know, you just got to wipe yourself off and dust yourself off and, and move forward. And, and it's our family that is the reason we can move forward is that we have each other. And when one's ready to throw in the towel, the other one will say, nope, we got to keep going. And, and it's made my family stronger. It's, you know, we are all together on this. I mean, there's no one out of all 30 plus of us in the family that feels differently. There's nobody who wonders, you know, maybe the government's right. I mean, nobody thinks that. We are so united on this. And what I also find interesting, you know, my family is probably half leans left and about half leans right. And so when you look at when they make comments about the justices, you know, the liberal justices ruled against us and Kennedy was the swing vote, to us it's like it's not political at all. It's just basic human property rights that right. were violated and and it really made my family stronger so um that's some of the good it's, you know i get to talk to my family well you know i want to jump in I want to jump in and say something, Donna, that uh, I really have a lot of respect for the Pacific Legal Foundation. They and their attorneys have been on my program many, many times. I want to extend to you and your family the best, and I mean this, of God's blessings in the future, and I certainly hope something will work out in the positive for you and your family. But I want to say to you how much I appreciate you coming on and talking about this situation, because you and many others in this great country, the United United States of America are going through similar problems with takings and private property, which the values of private property in the last decade or two decades have been diminished, and that's unfortunate. And I want to wish you the very best. Well, I sure do appreciate it. And um, if we have an update, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, you come back on my program anytime. You're always welcome. And thank you so much for being on the show this morning. Thank you, Zeb. God bless. Thank you. Donna Murr, and there's another story that absolutely, it hurts me, uh, about private property and, and the takings of government. And quite frankly, this family was lied to and not given the information. And for big government, all the way to the Supreme Court to come down against them, it, it hurts. And it shouldn't be that way. I've got to get a weather forecast here. Oh, my goodness, and the weather is brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657. And they've got all the delicious meats. Oh, my goodness, I love breakfast. And they've got all the breakfast sausages and the brats. Oh, ho, ho. and they've got a new type of bacon. It's called buckboard bacon. It's leaner and more economical than traditional bacon with a lot of different flavors, too. Check it it out. Go to their website, scarrowmeats.com. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome, and now, here's the weather. Here's your weather as we saddle up and ride again for today, and it's going to be a little bit on the breezy side, not as bad as it was yesterday afternoon, but close. Winds out of the west, 15 to 25 miles an hour, holding steady at about 17, but mostly sunny skies, high of 82, with an overnight low of 54 tomorrow. Mostly sunny skies. We still have a chance of a stray shower or a thunderstorm. That is possible. High of 79 with an overnight low of 48. Going to be windy for tomorrow as well. And then for Thursday, looks like mostly sunny skies. High close to 80. That's your weather for Zep at the Ranch. Uh, thank you, Gina. Always does a great job on our weather forecast. And, of course, it's brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call and find out more information from Don Scarrow and the crew, 324. 7657 delicious meats by the way that's their tagline changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time scarrow's meats 
Wow. Great program today. Enjoyed every bit of it with Dr. History and Donna Murr and Jason Gibbons. Everything, really. And Rachel Alexander, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow on the program, I am trying to get a lady on the phone by the name of, of uh, Yvonne. I can't find her name right now. But anyway, she's with the United States Forest Service. And she wrote a really good article about how to protect your property in case there's a forest fire. We're going to have Richard Mann from back east and he's going to be talking about energy here in the United States of America and how things are improving underneath this Trump administration and lots, lots more and including my old buddy Dave Bego from Indianapolis, Indiana. Dave was so gracious and so kind. He went and uh, sent me a whole bunch of these big, beautiful pictures like when the Cubs won the World Series last year. And I'm going to hold them up to the camera tomorrow so you can see them on my internet service, zebbell.com, during the program. And Dave will be on tomorrow morning at 9.06. And he'll be watching me hold them up in his office on his computer. So, Dave, I really appreciate everything you did. By the by, we are very thankful that we have all seven of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers as our major sponsor on this program. And right now, you're probably doing a lot of running around. You're probably taking the kids to baseball games, and you're probably going on vacation. You're going to see Aunt Martha and Uncle Fred. You're going a lot this summer, and you want to make sure that you have the safest tires for your car. Well, for your car, pickup, SUV, whatever, they've got all the tires, all the tread designs, all the sizes at all all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're doing the right thing matters. I mean, the best, the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, the best in people. I mean, man, the service is absolutely A+. plus. They really care, and they come a-jogging out to the car. May we help you? Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. The best. Wow. Tune in again tomorrow morning at 8.06. We'll saddle the horse and ride for three hours. And uh, look forward to having you be a part of the program. Be sure and call in on the open forum on the first hour. Right here on KBAR, 12.30 a.m. And then streaming live all over the world on ZebBell.com. And Wheels, you go have a good day. Don't get sunburned, buddy. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 8.06 on Zeb at the Ranch, where we always end the program with... The way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless. See you tomorrow morning.